I give credit when it's due, but I criticize when it's due. Thomas Tuchel, this was on you. This result was purely on Thomas Tuchel. Chelsea nil, Manchester City won. Let's go. Don't overreact. I'm telling you now, do not overreact. The easy thing now is to think that everything's burning around us when in reality, it's one game, it's three points, and they go to Manchester City. We were ahead of them, and now I think we're still ahead of them, but it doesn't matter because it's another day, it's a lesson to be learned, we will get better. But to get better, you need to talk about what happened and to get better, you need to be honest about what happened. And it's important that we're honest, we hold no punches and this is what we do on the Kafka Zoo. This is what we're gonna do on Chatting Breeze. I'm gonna break it down in chronological order what went wrong and why it went wrong. A lot of YouTube channels are gonna sugarcoat it. You know what, we were unlucky. No, things happen for a reason. And in this case, the reason is from the outset, Thomas Tuchel let us. Before we get started, do me a massive favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It is very important for you to do that, all right? YouTube loves it when you guys interact. When you watch more than half the video, YouTube loves it. So please give me an opportunity, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Let's keep it stepping with the video and the lineup. The reality is the minute those lineups came out, I knew it was bad. And I knew that we were gonna park the bus and I knew we were gonna defend. And people are gonna say, Alex, you're being ridiculously harsh. I'm not being harsh. I said it at the end of my last review and I said it and I'll reiterate it again and over and over again. It is impossible to have a threat going forward when you have nine defensive players and the only two alternatives are Werner and Lukaku. You're asking for trouble and that's exactly what happened. Thiago Silva was rested be due to a uh, niggle in his injury. Then we went for Kante, Jorginho and Kovacic. Whilst that midfield works, you cannot depend on it for creativity and this will be discussed further in the video. Let's go with point number one. Point number one. The reason this didn't work is Tuchel's tactics were all wrong. He wanted Manchester City to get comfortable, he wanted Manchester City to dominate, and he wanted Manchester City to grow into confidence. Instead of throwing a punch from the outset, we said, you know what, we're gonna bide the first round, we're gonna bide till half time, and then we'll see what comes there our way. And the reality is you can't do that with Manchester City. Pep was very smart this time. Gabra uh, Bernardo Silva dropped into midfield even deeper. They almost went with a 4-2-3-1. Rodri, Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne floating around, Phil Foden all over the gaff, Grealish and Gabi Jesus posed a direct threat over and over again. We couldn't do nothing, we lost that midfield battle. And the issue is when you lose the midfield battle is they are pressing us in. In the first half they had over 73% of the ball, right? A lot of people said to me, it doesn't matter that they have 70%, what chance do we, did they create? They were knocking the ball in time after time. It was relentless pressure. And relentless pressure eventually breaks a team down. And that's exactly what happened to us. The way Manchester City number two were moving the ball, Relentless pressure. You knew the goal was coming. In the first half, there were so many times we had last ditch blocks. So many times where I was like, you know what? Rudy got great defending. Christensen great defending. My notes were filling up. I take notes during these games. This is hard to do straight after the game to be not emotional or give you rational responses. The problem is the more blocks that happen, the more you know it's probability. One's gonna hit you and fly into the net. And guess what? It happens. Gabby Jesus with weaves and bobs, boom, shoots it. Jorginho wasn't close enough, deflects off Jorginho, goes into the bottom left-hand side of the corner, and next thing you know, we're losing one nil with nine men on the pitch that are defensive-minded. What does that mean? It means we have to come out and we have to play. And reality is, we're not good enough to be open in Manchester City with only two attacking players. We need more creativity, we need more juice, we need more structure, and the problem is we didn't have it on the pitch. A lot of you said, number three, you wanted to see Lukaku and you wanted to see Werner. And I think it's a tale of two halves. First half, you saw why you don't want to see them together. And the reason you don't want to see them together is because they need a creative outlet. You saw Werner's pace. Diaz did not want to handle Werner's pace. He was scared. He did not want to deal with him. He was tentative. There were two occasions in the first 20 minutes where Werner cooked him. Werner should have had a touch going inside. He went outside, crossed it to Lukaku. Lukaku just almost connected. It was interesting. Lukaku rolled Laporte like four times in this game. We caused problems. When the changes happened, 
when Too Short finally changed it and Kai came on and all of a sudden Ruben came on and we made it like an a, attempt to go forward. Guess what happened? We created chances. We actually looked a better team. We actually looked like we posed a threat. We actually looked like we were going to be a team that's competing for a title. Not West Brom and Derby, not Norwich, not Stoke City. We looked like Chelsea FC. And the problem is, why have weapons if you put no bullets in them? And that's exactly what's going on here. Then, more importantly, you want to play defensively. You want to play defensively, and this really frustrated me. Mateo Kovacic, final ball, once again, off. And Angola Kante, final ball, off. Jorginho, final ball, off. Werner, final ball, off. Lukaku, final ball, off. You understand what I'm saying here? You can't have players, if you want to play limited opportunity chances game, where you are compact and you will take your chances when they come, you can't have players fumbling passes. It does not work. You're asking for problems, you're asking for uncomfortable moments, and you're asking for to lose. You're asking to lose, and that's what happened. Werner crosses, not pinpoint, running into channels, crossing the ball to no man's land. Lukaku misconnecting, decision making, productivity. What have I been saying all season? We're winning games, but we're not getting great performances. And for me, performances matter more than results. Because if you drop points and you played well, the likelihood is you're going to win next time and the time after that and the time after that. But if you play badly and keep winning, eventually those results aren't going to be coming your way. We need to fix this and we need to fix it quick. Finally, let's talk about Aspilicueta and Alonso. Aspilicueta is not a good right wing back. I've said this on many occasions, a very solid, good defender, good captain, good legend. But it gets to a point now where you need to come up with a plan, a solution to fix the wing back areas. Alonso is the only man on this planet, on a football pitch, that makes me be scared. Listen to that. That's police. Police outside. They're coming to get Alonso after that performance. His performance today epitified why I don't want him to be left wing back. He's not athletic enough. He is not combative enough. He is only good with popping up with a goal once every six, seven games. And that's not good enough. He ruins open play attacks, patterns of play. Rudiger was yelling at him today. Rudiger wanted to rip his head open. Literally, Rudiger was not satisfied with his performance today. If Rudiger could, he would have slapped him. I promise you, straight slap one time around his stupid head. Because his performance today, Alonso's and Aspies going forward was shambolic. No threat, nothing. It was literally, they're there to defend and they're not going to offer anything going forward. And when you play with nine defenders, this is what happens. It's annoying, I'm frustrated, but I need to calm down. Whew, like I said, I need to calm down. And the reason I need to calm down is because it's not the end of the world. Manchester United have lost to Aston Villa. Chelsea are still top of the league as it stands. The only problem is Liverpool got Brentford at 5.30 and the likelihood is they're going to win their game. And if they win their game, they go three points clear, but it's fine. Look, the start of the season, if I told you lot we're going to have X amount of points after this run, after those first six games, a lot of you would have said, Give it to me now. And in this case, I'm happy. We're like, well, look, we beat Arsenal, we beat Spurs, we beat Palace. Great. We beat, uh, who else did we beat? Um, we drew with Liverpool and we drew with, and we lost to Man City. That's fine. It, it's fine. Because the reality is we've got a great run of fixtures coming up now. We need to start picking up these points now. This is where we're, our title's challenge is going to be broken or made. We need to start winning. Clinical. Rom, I need you scoring now. I need Romelu Lukaku to start scoring now. And I need the rest of them to start chipping in as well. We've got Juventus on midweek. We'll be there. We'll be covering it. Make sure you tune in. Subscribe to the channel. I'm out. Peace out. Bye.